Hello there, my name is Thomas Chapman and we are going to run through a uh, tutorial for baking AO to our vertices here. Um, we're going to do that, we're going to throw it in Unity and then we're going to build the shader in Shader Forge to make the um, vertex color and our diffuse texture work in Unity using Shader Forge. So you have to get up to this stage, uh, get your object happy to a level you want it, uh, be happy with diffuse, apply it with whatever you'd like. It really, really doesn't matter. The baking process is unaffected by what you've got on it. So, uh, you've got your mesh happy with it. It's been cleaned up and everything. Now, what we're first going to do is change our menu set to rendering, lighting and shading, and this is where most of your baking system is. So, what you can either do is texture bake or vertex bake, but because we know what we want, we're only going to do this one object, we can just go option box for batch bake in mental ray must have mental ray on. Uh, so you can do it this way. A faster way of doing it is doing it through just your polygon menu in color. Now we're going to pull off this panel so we're going to use it. Now um, we'll get rid of these and uh, in our color menu we have batch bag mental ray exactly the same thing. So with our little guy selected we're going to come to the option box for this. Um, this is when these two are created. So we're going to do it for our selected, we're going to bake to the vertices. Um, camera, keep his perspective, use bake set override, that's just going to turn off this down here. I might reset the settings so you can see, this is what it'll be like for you. We need to do vertices, there you go. Um, we don't want to bake shadows, uh, we're going to go bake set override, we're going to change our color mode to occlusion. Uh, occlusion rays, uh, if you're bake is coming out and it's very grainy, turn this up. I'm going to go with 128 because I've done this before and I know it's nice. So we'll enter that and then we're going to come down here, we're going to keep it on the color. Uh, you want to make sure that it is on overwrite and then we're going to go convert. There we go, perfect. Now with this little guy here you can clearly see the AO is baked in, looks good. Now if you're freaking out and you're in your hypershade, you've got it selected, and you go assign material, it doesn't work. The, eh, eh, no, nothing you can see. Don't freak out. That's just a system in here, in our color menu. We'll come back, the same thing up here. We're going to come down, we're going to go to color material channel. It's on none currently, it's showing the vertex color. So if we just click diffuse, there you go, that's exactly what you want. Now, if you finish with that, that's all done. Now all of these vertices have a color baked to them. Now it's it's a gradient black and white but we're all good. So you're going to export it FBX, pull it into Unity and then your scene will look something like this. Now you've got your table, let's just drag it in. If you drag it into up here it'll go at 000. If you drag it into the scene you're going to have to go options reset. Now you've got your table, it's pink because I've deleted my material it came in with. So we're going to create a material. Now we're going to name it table ooh, round uh, material. So with this material we're going to apply it straight away and there we go, that's it. That's just the light I've put in coming through. So this diffuse invert color is exactly what I want. I've built this earlier and now I'm going to show you how it works. So let's just throw this in and now you can see my AO coming through. But that's just one step too far ahead. We're going to click on this, we're going to go open in Shader Forge. If you haven't done this earlier, you're going to need to go Window, Shader Forge. So we're going to go open in Shader Forge, and this is exactly what it looks like. It's a very simple, simple, simple system because Shader Forge is so fantastic. So the first thing you're going to need is a vertex. Oh, misspelled it. We're going to need a vertex color node. All right? There you go. That's for whatever this is applied to, it'll pull the vertex color out of the mesh it's on. Now the other thing we're going to need is in the colored section, texture 2D, there we go, that's where you'll apply your texture. Now on this mesh, uh, even though it has this applied, this texture does not matter. You'll have to reapply it for later um, when you're actually in the scene, not in Shader Forge. So uh, we've done it all, just hold down M and click and you've got a multiply node and then you're going to connect them all up just to look like this. Now, when they do look like this, um, I'll show you how you can tell that it's working and it's not. We're going to compile this shader just to make sure that it's in defer diffuse invert color. We're going to come over here, look at our material, shader forge diffuse invert color. It's been selected, which is exactly what we want. Now, we've already put our texture in and we're going to apply it 
to our material. Now that's applied, fantastic, looks good. So the way we can tell this is working, if it's a yes or a no, it's a no-go, whatever we're doing, the way we're going to do it is by connecting and disconnecting. We're going to connect our just our diffuse RGB to our main diffuse. I'm going to compile the shader. And there you go. Right, so that's just out of fuse. Now, if you multiply it with your vertex color, you're going to get the AO come through. So we're going to swap these. It's going to recompile, and there you go. Now you can see AO is working. So that's a really easy method of checking that it's working, and that your um, object did come out with baked uh, AO to your vertices. So um, the multiply, just a quick note, it doesn't matter if this is on top or on bottom. I've tried, flipped them, you can do the same. It really, really doesn't matter. It's whatever it wants. Um, it's not like Photoshop, you don't have to have one on top of the other. So, um, thanks for watching. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask. I've been Thomas Chapman, and thanks for watching.